The goal of this video is to analyze the arc length of a polar curve. So the problem is that we have some polar curve and we would like to calculate the arc length. So we want to know how to find the arc length. We do know how to find arc length in the Cartesian case. If we have y as a function of x, we know there's an integral formula that will yield the arc length. But this is a very Cartesian formula. We need y in terms of x, which is not immediately compatible with a polar curve. So there's really another question lingering, which is, is it possible to calculate the arc length in terms of theta? And that's what we need to work on. So we'll start with um, an approximation for a small piece of curve. Suppose we have a polar curve and two successive, well, two nearby points, and we would like to find what we'll call delta L, the little bit of arc length from one point to the next. Let's draw in some curves of constant radius, concentric circles about the origin. And the change in the r coordinate from one point to the next, we'll call that delta r. And the change in the theta coordinate, we'll call delta theta. Now, we're going to be interested in the length of this little sector right here. And how could we find that length? Let's say that the r coordinate of the first point is called r. Some basic precalculus tells us that the arc, the sector in question has length r delta theta. Now here's the key observation which motivates the whole thing. If, if delta theta is pretty small, then that figure on the right hand side is very nearly a right triangle because the constant radial and constant theta lines are, are, are orthogonal to each other. So we could pretend like that's a right triangle and apply the Pythagorean formula. Of course, that only gives us an approximation, but if delta theta is small, it's a pretty good approximation. So delta L squared is approximately equal to delta R squared plus R squared delta theta squared. So we're going to carry this over. And remember, we want everything in terms of theta. It's not quite clear what delta R is in terms of theta, so we're going to need to work on that a little bit dr d theta, the derivative of r with respect to theta, should be approximately equal to the change in r over the change in theta. This is just to say the tangent slope of a function should approximately equal the secant slope if your delta is small enough in the independent variable. That tells us that delta r should be approximately equal to dr d theta times delta theta. So we're going to apply that, plug it right into the formula on the left, and we can factor out the delta theta squared. and Notice that dr d theta and r are both functions of theta. This is good news. Everything in sight is a function of theta, and we can take the square root. And there's our approximation. The length of a segment, a little bit of uh, arc length, will be given by that formula. So we're going to take that formula and now look at a whole curve where we delta theta is no longer small. We're going to have a um, just some curve in the plane. What we could do is divide the theta interval into equal divisions. So let's say we divided the theta interval into five equal divisions. So we would have points spread out so that the difference between the theta coordinates is equal between them all and relatively small. And we would draw these segments in. And hopefully the sum of these five segment lengths will approximate the length of the curve. And we'll Recall that these are functions of theta, so we need names for the arguments we're going to plug in to these functions. So let's call them theta 1, theta 2, etc. through theta 5. And the length will be approximately equal to the sum of these five segment lengths, which is given by that formula right there. You could, of course, repeat this for any number of divisions. And both of these look suspiciously familiar. They're both Riemann sums. And if you continue to divide the theta interval into more and more pieces, in other words, you let n go to infinity, you get an integral. And that integral looks similar to the one for Cartesian coordinates. It's different, and, um, but it does the job. 
So that's the answer to our question. What's the arc length? We have an integral formula for it. And is it possible to calculate in the terms of theta? Yes, all the, all the gadgets on the right-hand side of this formula are functions of theta. So let's take a look at an example. Unit circle, r equals, not the unit circle, <laughs> circle of radius 3, r equals 3, theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. So we know that the arc length in this case is simply the circumference, which is pi times the diameter. So the answer should be 6 pi. We know that before we even calculate this. What does our formula tell us? We know we need dr d theta, which in this case is just 0. And theta has to run from 0 to 2 pi to get the whole circle. So the template formula, when we substitute in the specifics in this case, we will go from 0 to 2 pi, and it's the integral of the square root of 0 squared plus 3 squared. So that's just 3 times the integral d theta from 0 to 2 pi, which is not that hard, and it's 6 pi. And it agrees with what we already knew to be the answer. So far, so good. Example B. Find the exact arc length of r equals 2 secant theta. Theta runs from 0 to pi over 3. So if you take that polar formula and you mess around with it a little bit, r cosine theta equals 2, you recognize the left-hand side as being x. So what we really have is a portion of the line x equals 2, the vertical line x equals 2, theta equals 0 to pi over 3. So we're getting that segment right there. And pi over 3 is 60 degrees, and that base width is 2. So a little basic geometry tells us that that height should be 2 root 3. Once again, we know what the answer to this problem is going to be before we even make a calculation. It's 2 root 3. So let's see if that works. There's our template, our integral formula for arc length. Now we need dr d theta, which in this case is 2 secant theta tan theta. We're going to plug all that in and now do a little algebra on the inside of the radical. We can factor 4 secant squared and we will apply a trig identity and notice that the integrand is a perfect square in there under the radical. So actually this integral reduces quite nicely. And better yet, secant squared, we know what the antiderivative is, it's tangent. So it's all downhill from here, and when you plug in everything, you realize, yes, the arc length really is 2 root 3. So the formula works again. Now, uh, for the last example, we're going to approximate the arc length of one petal of r equals 3 cosine 3 theta. So we need dr d theta. Plug that in. And we want this arc length right here of that one petal. And we could use theta start to be negative pi over 6 and theta finish to be pi over 6, but in which case this would be the integral we're looking at. But it's often wise to use symmetry to help your calculations be a little simpler. In this case, we could take half the pedal and double it. So I'm going to choose to do that. What is the integrand? Once you plug in the relevant information, you get that function right there, which for the sake of playing around with it a little bit, we can make it look a little simpler, I suppose. And now when we take the square root of that, we get something that looks maybe nicer. Sort of a matter of opinion, I suppose. This is not an integral we're going to do exactly. It's too much. But fortunately, we were asked to approximate the arc length, so use your favorite calculator or online utility and you get about 6.7 for your arc length and you should notice that this is reasonable because if you were, go, you were to move from the origin out to the point 3 comma 0 and back again directly along the x-axis that would be 6 units and clearly you're going out of your way to go out there and back so it's got to be greater than 6 and it is so it at least passes that hurdle this looks reasonable